I don't want to talk about all this. I'm here talking now because I'm hoping it'll help someone. October 19th, 2000, my life changed forever. I was sexually assaulted right after my father passed away. What did that do to you mentally? That's a recipe for a psychological break. I got a gun. And my family, they're like, you're so crazy. Jews don't have guns. <laughs> <laughs> my dad's lawyer was somehow inside my house, just sitting in the living room. I turned on the lights and he was like, Tina, we have to talk. There's there's something, some things you probably don't know about your father. That felt really good to unload all that. October 19th, 2000, my life changed forever. It's like the course of my life drastically changed. I had moved back home because my dad and my, my parents had split and my dad wanted to keep the house that we grew up in. It was like a, I don't know, like a 4,500 square foot house. It was huge. And he's like, I just need someone to be here, you know, to help out a little bit. And I was like, it's fine. You know, like my dad was never one for rules. So I, I go I upstairs changing and he had a friend of his staying with us. And his friend came up to my bedroom, which he would never came upstairs and his eyes were red. And he said, Tina, your father's been in a car accident. They took him by helicopter to shock trauma. Oh. And immediately I knew that this was not good. You don't just get a helicopter ride to shock trauma. There's, you know, there's so many hospitals, great hospitals in Baltimore. And, and that's where he ended up. I dropped everything. I went down there and they, I was in the waiting area and they told me, you know, go home. He's fine. Uh, we're just going to be running some tests and you'll be able to pick him up in the morning. So I was like, okay, I wasn't expecting that, but that's excellent news. Yeah. Great. So my younger sister was staying with us that evening and I woke her up that morning and I, I tell her what happened and I said, I'm going to go pick up dad from the hospital. So I go there and they take me up to the trauma bay and he's intubated. And I was like, well, I was told to come pick him up. And they said, I'm so sorry, we must have gotten you confused with someone else. Holy crap. Right. So that was like oh. gutted. He had a traumatic brain injury. He had a, you know, a bolt measuring his pressures in his brain. And he was on the ventilator. And I just, you know, lost it because it was just not what I was expecting. And um, I spent the day there and I... That night when I got home, it was dark, and um, my dad's lawyer was somehow inside my house, just sitting in the living room. I turned on the lights, and he was like, Tina, we have to talk. And um, he's like, there's there's something, some things you probably don't know about your father. And he was involved oh, in boy. some pretty <laughs> shady business. I think you have a lot of money and drugs in this house somewhere. Oh, my god! And you need to... Make sure you keep your doors and your windows and everything locked and don't trust anyone. I mean, I always had a suspicion. What made you suspicious? He was out a lot at night, like, you know, to the wee hours. And then he owned an electrical contracting company. He, would, mm -hmm. he was the hardest working guy. He would get up every day at like 5 a.m., go off Respect. to work, come home, and then go do his side thing. But then there would always be like random like piles of money sitting around. Then it would be gone. You know, like big piles. Yeah, pretty pretty <laughs> decent. I mean, for you know, at at my age, what I thought was was such, um, and just the the company he kept. Hmm. Um, Do you know what kind of business he was involved in? Not electrical, but the crime. It sounds like organized crime. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, I would assume so. Um, um, two of his friends were deported back to Israel. Um, my uncle was deported back. Um. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't want to know. Yeah. You know, yeah. I just like, it's really, it's really hard because he's dead now. What was your home life like before that accident? Like, what was it like to grow up in your house? I think that if I didn't have my childhood best friend and her family, I would be a completely different person. Hmm. Um, being the oldest of, of the two of us, um, it was bad. It was just, it was so much emotional abuse. And hmm. um, there are things that happen. Like I, I was sexually assaulted hmm. right after my father passed away in my house by <sighs> by a friend. And I 
I packed that away so deep that it didn't come out until um, just a, f- a few years ago. It was oh, something triggered me. So question, my last guest has an experience like that. And he said that he did the same thing. Mm-hmm. And deep down, he knew something was bothering him all these years, but he had literally blocked out exactly mm-hmm. what it was. And he faced that and got a lot of freedom. Is that what that yes. was like? Well, the craziest thing was, is that when I did go to, so when I started working in the ICU and then I had that one patient that was dying the first day and I went to go get help, the therapist asked me if I had been sexually assaulted. And I was like, no, what are you talking about? And did you, did you know that you had at that point? No, I was like, wow. how on earth does he, where, where is he coming up with this? Yeah, how dare you, you? Know? What the heck? And I, I was, I was offended and I had told my husband, I'm like, can you believe this schmuck saying this? And, um, and then, you know, and I kept talking to him, he never brought it up again. Actually, he, he sent me off to his coworker. He's like, girl, you need medications. Like you cannot sit still. You're playing with your hair, being mm. all crazy. So that was when I, you know, I got put on, um. Adderall and then how did you end up remembering that what was there a moment was it on under the influence of something or a very emotional time in life what was that like when that memory came back um it would be when I was sleeping and my husband would be trying to get my attention Mm -hmm. you know to wake Mm -hmm. me up and I'd be like it 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 was that and I could not figure it out for the longest time Mm. it was it was just this one action, and I was like, don't do that. I don't know what it is about that, but it really bothers me. And he would forget because it wasn't a big deal. Yeah. And then finally it hit me, and I was like, oh, my God. It was something about that is what triggered this. Interesting. And, um, yeah, it was really – it was really bad. I got through it, and a lot of that was, you know, and talking to some of my childhood friends about that experience too. Because hmm. it's how old were you at that time? Um, twenty. Oh, gosh. it was the day after my dad passed away. Oh my god! So my yeah, my dad was, you know, he had that brain injury on October the nineteenth, and it was on October. I'm sorry, on December thirtieth, he passed away. What did that do to you mentally? Just that whole thing: your dad abruptly dying, the sexual assault. You're in school recently on medication. That's I mean that's recipe for a psychological break almost yeah but somehow i got through it because i knew that's incredible that i knew that no matter what if i just get through this if i finish school i pass my boards and get my nursing license like i will be fine Hmm. right i will have a job i don't have to worry about anything and i will have my freedom and i just had to suck it up for two years At that point, that's how much I had left. And I did it. And I remember the night that I graduated, I looking up at my ceiling and I cried. And I like, Mm. I know that your like child being born is supposed to be the best day of your life, but like that was the best day of my life because I knew no matter what, like I was going to be okay. I Mm. was going to have a career. I was going to be able to to survive. I was not going to have to depend on anyone. And that, Like, that was everything. So you had to basically suppress those emotions for two years. Mm -hmm. Those don't go anywhere. Did you, did they, did that take a physical toll at all? Suppressing those emotions? What was was Absolutely. So, you know, I had had been told forever that I had, you know, ADHD. Mm -hmm. Well, that's when I started getting... Um, you know, Ritalin and Adderall from people. We'll and then I even, the <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, even like, even cocaine, I would get it here and there. I'd like crank out my papers. My grades went up. Mm. I was, you know, because it, it brought me down. It made me normal. And I was such just a trip, like, the way it does that. Able, I got, I got through it. And then, I mean, I like th- the cocaine was horrible because it just, the, the coming down off oh, of it was every just every 20 minutes you need another miserable. one. After two or three, you're not yeah. even getting up anymore. You're just in some half-cocked tweaker state. And, and then I was the afraid. Worst. I'm like, am I going to become addicted to this? Probably. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't. I didn't. Once, That's once school was done, I was like, all right, I am a professional now. And, you know. That is very <laughs> rare. And then wow. I didn't do it. I know. I don't even know. Did those emotions come up and take like did you ever have a time in your life later where you just got blindsided and you couldn't stop crying or you had some sort of severe depression or anything you think was linked to suppressing those emotions for that two years 
There, I got a gun. <laughs> <laughs> I took a gun safety class and I had this gun and my family, they're like, you're so crazy. Like, Jews don't have guns. <laughs> you know? And so um, I, I had it and then, and then this came up. And then, and the gun started like calling to me mm. and it was like, pick me up. Yeah. Just put it to your head. And I'm like, why am I thinking this? What is wrong with me? Like, this is just like, it was, it became obsessive. And then I would. The gun thinking about it. Yeah. Mm. Or even like my, my brother-in-law in Berlin has this, he lives in a very high um, apartment and there are no screens on the windows. And like, sometimes the voices would just say, just jump. Mm. See if it hurts. When all of this came up, I told my husband about it and I like I gave him the gun and was like, hide this from me. I don't need this. I keep waiting. I'm like, where's that voice? The voice mm. is gone. But it was just weird because I'm like, I've never felt so um emotionally unstable before. Mm. Like I've always, you know, have been able to identify, okay, I'm going through something and you know. But I still, like, I didn't even go talk to anyone about it. I'm just, you know, I talk to anyone who will listen to me. Mm. But for some reason, I just have something against interviewing a therapist and finding someone or just having to, like, talk. Is? I don't want to talk about all this. Mm. I mean, I, I'm here talking now because I'm hoping it will help someone. For sure it will. You know, 100%. but but to, like, work through my own stuff, I'm, I'm, I feel like I get along fine. Uh, it's a fine line. I, mm -hmm. I know talk therapy is helpful, but in my experience, there's a point where it's not helpful. Like stop re-traumatizing yourself. Right. You know? And I learned, I forget where I learned it, but I guess the rule of thumb in someone's opinion is you talk about it with two trusted sources of someone who could fully understand and validate what you're saying and then a professional if you need it hmm. and that's it. And anything after that, you're just re-traumatizing yourself and reopening the circuitry in the brain. And I, I had a long time of just talking about the same thing over and over again in counseling. And I got better when I stopped. I and love I'm, that. I'm not against counseling. There's right. obviously a great place for it. I really do think that there's a point where if you've expressed it six ways from Sunday, somebody's validated it, you've gotten all the instruction you can from friends and professionals, it's probably time to just yeah move on. I love that. I mean, that, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Hmm. This is why it's going to help people, as you're saying, because you're so accomplished, you're so put together, you're so kind and so humble, and you've been through all this, and you don't see it from a victim standpoint. You see it with a positive attitude. You started a career to help people because of your trauma. That's exactly what we're doing on the show. <laughs> Thank you for sharing all that. It is absolutely yeah. going to help people. That felt really good to unload all that. That's awesome. <laughs> well, it's going to feel good for a lot of people to hear it that would think, I've never shared that with anyone. Mm -hmm. She's been through that. I would have never known. And it will cause everyone to be kinder. That's what we're doing here. Well, good. Yeah. I hope hope my story can help someone else. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Please leave a comment and subscribe. It really helps grow the channel so we can continue to get great guests. In the meantime, check out these two videos right here. Thank you. Thank you.